Skipper Diaz is a big guy with a big heart who's had a big influence on the students he taught and the athletes he coached. He's best known as the head football coach at Farrington High School for two decades, starting in the 1980s. Many who avidly followed his career are unaware that Skippa and his wife, Mary, spent more than four years caring for family members in Wisconsin. We caught up with Coach Skippa Diaz during a visit back to the islands. Long Story Short with Leslie Wilcox, produced with Sony Technology, is Hawaii's first weekly television program produced and broadcast in HD. High definition, it's in Sony's DNA. Aloha no, I'm Leslie Wilcox of PBS Hawaii. Mahalo for joining me for another Long Story Short. Before Skip Adias coached football, he played football at Farrington High School in Kalihi, where he was an all-star lineman, and Oregon State University, where he earned all-conference honors, and he even played professionally in the Canadian Football League. But as a boy, Skip Adias was too big to play football. You're a big guy even when you're a little kid, right? Yeah, no, I was a bambula. Yeah. I mean, I was such a bambula that I, I love to play f sports, particularly football, but unorganized. When, when it became organized, they, they put weight limit on you. <laughs> you know, well, how big were you? I was bigger than the average beer. <laughs> but, uh, I heard you were 200 pounds in third grade. Uh, yeah, 180 maybe. I, I tried to say about <laughs> that. But you could be 100 pounds. <laughs> to play football and I was 180, 200. And so I never, never got to play football when I was eight through when I was 14. What did you do instead? I ended up doing a sport where they did it wavy. I went swimming and I swam at Palama Settlement. Jeff Yamashita, Lincoln, and several of the other guys, Larry Oshiro, they're all from Palama Settlement. They all, and I tell you, the guys that were around you know, when when we were young, we, we were looked at and said, no, nah, he ain't going to make it, you know. <laughs> but oh, lo and behold, majority of them did, came out preachers, policemen, firemen. They work hard working people. And they ministers come up from the group that I was around. So, And then it was affected by the the people who were at Palama Settlement or at the various schools that we went to. They, they help, you know, mold us. And then uh, my parents at home. So uh, the education was always a, a major aspect for me. And uh, I'm, I'm glad I, I, I did get into that area because it allowed me to do stuff with uh, kids and, and, and affect their lives somehow during their lifetime. I would think that a, a big guy wouldn't be that fast in the water, but I'm told yeah. you were fast. You're a real competitive swimmer. Yeah, I, I, I did okay. I, Butterfly? Uh, fly was uh, my stroke, but uh, I like the IM, the individual medley too. And I was, a, see there's two kinds of swimmers. There's sinkers and there's floaters. I was a floater. And it's easy, easy, you know, when you're buoyant, you stay on top of the water. When you sinker, three quarters, you get a almost swim straight up to stay above the water. And I, I, th I think I, I allowed that to make me do what I was doing. And Bill Smith, the world champion world swimmer. Cha he was Bill my Smith, idol, yeah. He said that if you kept at it, you could have been an Olympic prospect. Uh, him and I were about the same mold, but yes, he said that. I, I don't know. You never know when you go start on your track, you know. When I was 14, I, 15, I, I, I finished swimming and I went with football and track because it was, I think it was more popular at the time. You know, um, some of the guys who go back a long time with you said, um, you know, I was asking why has Skippa been so effective with, um, with players and with young people and they said that's because he came up the hard way. So my question to you is how tough is the hard way? Well, low income, you know, and I had seven sisters and brothers and mama at Hanai had about another seven of us and living in Mir Wright housing. Right housing right. How big was your place with fourteen oh, three, kids? Yeah, it was three in a bed and two in a bed. <laughs> it was was a lot. And and over the year, um, when one went and another one came in, mom did a lot of she took care of a lot of kids besides us. What did your dad do? Dad worked for at Pearl Harbor. He was uh, 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 working on the on the boats and 
Then uh, he, when he had his a heart attack, he couldn't work anymore. So he spent a lot of time going to the library. And I was a, the book carrier. He, the guy was a tremendous reader. He could read almost a book a day. I mean, one of those fat ones, too. But I was the guy who had to carry all those books from their rights down Kukui Street, get to the, the library, and then he ordered another one, and I'll pick them up and go back. And I was, I was the carrier for that. Did you mind doing that for him? No, no, I didn't, because I, I, found, I found a lot of good solace in, in, the, in the library, a lot of different stuff. I got to reading a lot of things. I think that's one of the reasons I became a history teacher, because of the amount of reading I did with Dad. When your mom kept bringing more kids in the house, do you ever think, whoa, what about me, Mom? <laughs> or <laughs> or, or, or how, how small is the dinner going to be tonight? <laughs> Did you ever have those thoughts? Yeah, oh, yeah, indubitably. I, I, but uh, somewhere, somehow, she managed to spread it all around, and everybody had something to eat. So, And uh, I, I did a lot of different kinds of things. Uh, I shined shoes, and I, you know, help wash cars and stuff like that. Did but, you keep the money or did you give it to your family? All went to mom, all went to mom. Everything went to mom. And I, I felt like I was contributing to the family that way. Well, when you have a lot of kids, she has less time to oh, yeah. divide oh, up, yeah. right? Oh, yeah. So oh, yeah. you probably could get into some big trouble on your own. Yes, yes, a person could do that real easily. And I, I got on the outskirts of that area, but I, I don't. I didn't think I was, you know, getting into that kind of trouble. Mom and Dad was always very educationally inclined. They felt that we needed to go to school. So, and my aunts and uncles steered me in the right direction. I had coaches and I had teachers that straightened me out. I had a principal at Central Intermediate, Mr. Manuel Kwan. Oh. He's, he let me know which, what, which way to go in the door and go out the door. And he, he, he got it across to me in no uncertain terms. And I, I sort of like that. You, I like when somebody put a line down and says, hey, you do this or you do that, you know. And, and it's nice. Life is good when you, when you have things that you know you got to do and then you do it. It's structured. And structured, yes. And that's how you coach, too, I right? I coach that way, too. You know, with the upbringing from my my family, my sisters, as well as mom and dad, I made education the, the top of the rung. You do that first. You know, if you can play it for us, you get your grades squared away, you make sure that you kiss mom and daddy every morning. You know, I required that. Sing the alma mater before and after practice, every practice. And before you know it, they get out in the field and. You know, they, they're doing stuff besides themselves for somebody else. And, and you get good, good results when you get a kid to think in those terms, to, to go ahead and, you know, do it because of mom, do it because of my friends. You get somebody pushing you to do something right, like Tom Kiyosaki or Mr. Shigemi at, at, at Likiliki Elementary, and demand that, and, you know, you end up doing it. This is Chan, sixth grade, Licky Licky Elementary. She was a beautiful lady, but she put the law down and I followed the law, you know. If I, if I did something wrong at school, when I went home, my mom and dad just chastised me for, for not being a good guy. So I got my upcomings because of my family and the, the people in the community. And it really, you know, I mean, that's what made me do what I, I did go to college, play, play some sports, get an education, come back home. And I had a, my, my dream job was Farrington High School. You went to OSU. I went to Oregon State University. And you know, my daughter went there and so I've traveled there in the last 10 years. And it's, today it still is a very white bread yeah. university. How did you do over there? Did you feel at home? Oh yeah, yeah, well, there's a, there was a large community of local kids. There's a Hawaii club, oh, yeah, in fact, yeah, yeah. right? All up and down the coast. Oregon it competes with Oregon State for the luau's, who do a better luau. But there were, we had a lot of kids that you could, you know, fall back on when you get lonesome for home. 
and and I, Rockney Freitas and I were were going to school together at the at the time, and and then we had all the other kids that we knew from Maui, from Molokai, that was going to school over there. Made it easier for us to make that transition. Throughout his life, Skippa Diaz has navigated some pretty big transitions. After earning bachelor's and master's degrees in education from Oregon State University, Skippa returned to Hawaii. He taught and coached at Washington Intermediate and at Kalani, Waialua, Mililani, and Farrington High Schools. Skippa's wife Mary, also a lifelong educator, was vice principal at Waialua High and Intermediate and at Roosevelt High School. In 1995, a major health crisis gave the two of them a wake-up call, so to speak. You're a big guy, but you used to be a bigger guy yeah, in physical from, stature. Yeah, yeah. What happened? Well, I I just ate too much, and, and uh, <laughs> I had a condition called sleep apnea, and that uh, I didn't realize I had that. I just thought I was, you know, when I got. Every morning, I thought I was sleeping at night, but I get up in the morning and I, I was tired. And, and this went over about a six, seven year period. And uh, I, I um, ended up, I had uh, heart congestion, uh, heart, not a heart attack, but a congestive heart failure. Because of lack of oxygen? Because of lack of oxygen. And the way I got that one was, uh, when you get sleep apnea, you, you, you have that, uh, your air passage closes up. And when it does, you ain't got no air coming in. And, and I took a sleep study after I got into the hospital. And they, they took me to Kuakini Hospital to give me a sleep study. And what I found out was uh, when I'm sleeping, um, uh, episode, they have this thing called episode. It's a period of time when you don't take in oxygen at all. And usually the episodes range from 20 to maybe 60 times at night that you stop breathing. And I think when I was there, I, I had uh, 37 times where I stopped breathing for almost two minutes per episode. It's a life-threatening oh, problem. Way, all the way. But it affects the oxygen got to go all through your body so you can, you know, function well. And the darn thing was, was breaking down and, and my liver and my lungs and all of that. Was, and you were toughing it out, thinking, I, I don't feel biting, so good, yeah, but yeah, I'm yeah, going yeah, to I'm work. Gonna, I'm going to I'm going to do them. I'm going to do them. But I was at a meeting there one, one day, and um, George Kamau, who's a, our trainer, he looked at me, he says, hey, there's something wrong with you. He took me in his truck and took me down to the hospital, and, and they, they, they diagnosed me and said, hey, this is what you got, man. And they told your wife. Told my wife, uh, and, yeah, almost, yeah. Almost mucky died dead. Yeah, 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 she almost, almost passed. But somehow, uh, you know, their help made it it's possible for me to stay alive. And that was in 1995. So. Did you feel like you were? Oh, I. Did you feel you were, I mean, you must have been getting so little oxygen and feeling so exhausted oh, yeah. and then carrying this weight around. Oh, yeah. That, that was big time. Scary. <laughs> in fact, I don't know if they gave you that great a chance. No, no. They, they thought it would be. Um, I, you know, this guy better bring the priest in. Yeah. But it, somehow it it didn't occur. I don't know if the Lord said, hey, wait, <laughs> thank you, thank you. But uh, well, it, what has changed then? Now you've lost weight. Uh, you've that's been a the plan, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. And and maintain one good, healthy lifestyle. And for me and the wife, we've. We've retained at least for the last four years that we've been away from from home. Uh, we made it a made, made a point to swim minimum of three times a week, and and that really helped. How are you getting the oxygen you need? I have I have uh, with sleep apnea. What they do, they give you a, a certain ways that they they can do it. Mine was uh, I have a, a machine called a CPAP machine. 
uh, CPAP acronym for Continuous Positive Air Pressure. And it's like a, a machine that uh, operates in reverse of a vacuum cleaner. Instead of sucking the air in, it blows the air out, and it, uh, it's a, the box about this big and has flexible hose, and, and then some Velcro to wrap around your forehead. And then you have what I call the opihi. Now I promote that to anybody I know who has sleep apnea or the, 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 they snore a lot. That's a big sign. I, I tell them, hey, go get one sleep study. And, and, and if the stuff is at, at the level it is, Go, go use a CPAP machine. Because, yeah, because some people who die, quote, in their sleep, that's, that's sleep and, apnea. And it's, yeah, it's sleep apnea. It's doing that. And, and it's, it's really something that can be avoided. By 2004, Skip Adias was helping to lead the city's parks department when another health concern led to another major transition for him and Mary. Not his own health, but that of Mary's parents and Mary's disabled brother, Butchie. Coincidentally, Skippa had a brother-in-law and a brother named Butchie. This transition took the couple to Wisconsin for more than four years. My wife uh, found out that while we were here, that mom, dad, and Butchie were going to be put in a home because mom and dad couldn't take care of Butchie. They were in their 90s. They were in their 90s, yes, 94. Mom was 94 and dad was 95. And, and we went, my wife told me, you stay here because I, I had a pretty decent job with the city and county. Deputy director of right, parks, right, right. sure. Right, that move. And, and she said, She's going to go up there and take care of all three of them. And it took me a month. And I said, <laughs> time out. I cannot do this. I got to be with my, my woman. And I said, I'm, I'm going up too. So I retired and then I went up and she said, I had a good job. But then I found out that I don't care what job you got. If the person you loved with all your life is not with you, it's a miserable life. So. I, I went up there. Had she already gone when you figured that out? Well, I, she had to. Well, I, you know, she was always with me, so I figured I can handle. Mm -mm. I couldn't handle. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I just I went up there, and then, then that's when I, I just had a, a tremendous re revelation uh, that that uh, you know when, when when you take care of people you care for when they need the help. There is going to be reward, not financial, but you know your brain going, going to stay right. You're going to be able to go to sleep real easy, you know, when when it's finished. But the journey took four years, four and a half years. But uh, it, you know, it's just something you do, and 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 I, I'm very, very. I feel real good that I went and did that. And it wasn't um, a hobby. It was a full-time, 24-7 commitment. Yeah. That's what it is. And, and it, was, uh, it was my wife, too. Man. At first, she was taking care of three. You know, just to take care of one 24-7 is a mean chore. You put two yeah. or three. Huh? So we, you know, I had Butchie 24-7. Mom. Mary was taking care of mom, and then we both could take care of dad because he was, you know, he was just using the two canes. He went from the two canes to the walker, from the walker to the wheelchair. And, and same thing with mom. You could see in, in the tail end of their lives, they have uh, certain things they're going to do, and that, that digression is going to end up with them leaving you. But who? Couldn't beat it. Yeah. I wouldn't accept all the money in the world. I ain't gonna, gonna make me want to do something other than what I did these past four years. There's this great picture of you and Butchie. Oh, yeah, yeah. This one, this one has always. <laughs> this guy he used to smile, and he used to tap me on my shoulder when I was going too fast. You know, I was swimming in there, but yeah, this guy was. 
He was just uh, the, the, the apple of my eye. A Down syndrome, autism. Yes. Oh, uh, he's in a wheelchair. But he broke his hip, and he was just confined to a wheelchair. I notice you never say brother-in-law. He's your brother. He's my brother. He was, from the day I saw him, I said, this said he's, I get two brother butchies. It was, was really a, a, a great uh, feeling to, to have both of them. But uh, this one here was, he was something else. Dad was something else, too. The guy was 99 years old, and he could remember stuff. I mean, I'm 63, 64. I'm forgetting stuff. The guy was 99. And we're talking about a certain person. I don't know the guy's name. He remembers the name. We're playing cards, and, and, and he tells me what my score is. And I thought, I, I said, I got this much. We're playing uh, cribbage. He says, no, you got two more points. I go, huh? <laughs> and he, he's correct. And he's 99 years old. He was just superb. He did, but, but when he got sick, I, I, you know, he, hard to slow down the movement of that. So, but he was a darling. He was a good father. You know, it sounds like you live your life so that you don't have regrets. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You, you don't get small stuff in the way, but you get a put your heart in, in one position and find out where that bugger aiming, and you go that way. And, and it comes out pretty good. And your heart's always right? So far, so far. It, it, with my wife, with these guys, yeah. With my family, yeah. You think after being married for decades already, you got to know her better than? Oh, yeah, yeah. That's the part that came, came full circle. I says, hey, this is the right one I got, you know? I don't know if he's saying that about me, but <laughs> <laughs> as far as that is concerned, it's really, a, really something I, boy, if, if I had to pick a thing I did that I was pretty good, what was that? To, 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 to be part of my, you know, be, be with my wife for now to the, whenever. I'm, I'm, I'm totally involved in, in what she does, and, and I know she is in mine from, from day one. It seems that Skip Adias takes pride in everything he does. Whether it's caring for family or molding young people or competing in athletics, he puts his whole heart into it. His warmth and energy can light up a room and deeply touch people. Evidence of that? Half a dozen teachers at Farrington now were his students. Practically the entire coaching staff for his football team played for him. And his secret? He's got heart. I developed uh, an acronym, and the acronym was spelled out HEART, H-E-A-R-T. H referred to humility, the ability to, you know, to uh, uh, listen to another person and bite your tongue if, if he's saying something that's different than what you want. But being humble is, is, a, is a quality that is really, really sought after for a lot of people, but not, never acquired. But humility is a good one. E, education. That one was very, very significant in my family's uh, upbringing. A, attitude, a positive attitude, making sure that you know, whatever the goal, whatever the project, you set yourself out to be positive and, and get the darn thing done. Um, R, responsibility. You gotta be responsible for all the things that you do, and sometimes for the things that you, your friends and your loved ones are doing. But being responsible in that manner has, has some beautiful connotations that, that grow from it. And then T, of course, stands for team, team sports. So I, I always try to slip those five things in on the kids in conversations and developments, and, and, and it helped, it helped. And I, I always wanted to, to try to emulate Lauren Gill King. I, I don't know if that many guys know him now, but he was one of my favorite. And like, uh, Tom Kiyosaki, all these guys, they, they even give me the juice to go ahead and, and, and try to do something good. And if you, can, if you can do it for a person, 
that's, that's pretty neat. And, and then the kids that I, you know, when I walk down anywhere in the community, and they, I hear that word coach, I, I, I think that's better than skipper. And it's, it's really, really, a, a, you know, like what one parent would feel, the goodness because of, the, because of what the kid is doing. I just pop my buttons all the time. Right at, right at Farrington High School right now, we got about, I got about six kids that played for, for me that are teachers over there. Uh, what, what, what better thing that you can see than a kid make the circle and follow you down the road? And it's, it's nice to, to see that, that stuff happening yeah. by people that I, I, you know, I, I worked with and coached. It's good stuff. And all of his athletes remember his crushing handshake at their first meeting, letting them know in a friendly way from the get-go he's nobody to trifle with. Skippa Diaz came up the hard way and came out on top, using strength of heart and strength of mind to inspire others all along the way. The latest move for Skippa and Mary? Transitioning back to Hawaii after caring for their ohana on the mainland. I'm so glad Coach Skippa Diaz stopped by PBS Hawaii to join us for this long story short. Mahalo piha, Coach. I'm Leslie Wilcox. Ahui ho kako. Long Story Short with Leslie Wilcox is produced in HD by PBS Hawaii with Sony Technology. High definition, it's in Sony's DNA. So the people in Wisconsin call you Skipper. Yes. And do you forget sometimes and say, oh, are you Pow? Yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> when, I, when I start moving, talking fast, my, my friends up there, all you guys up there, they think, what language are you speaking? <laughs> but they know how pow or, or we go, we go, you know, I don't care. <laughs> 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 they, they pick up on that, but good people in Wisconsin, at least the area I came from, uh, they, you know, they, they're, always, they're always watching you, but once they know you, oh boy, they, they're just like Hawaiians, but speaking English. I mean, they're real good people. What do they call the Aloha Spirit in Wisconsin? The Wisconsin Spirit, they call them that. <laughs> they, they really oh, do. Oh, yeah, yeah.